Well, hello again from the Paris Air Show, where this week we've seen another battle of the big wide-body market between Airbus and Boeing reach a new level. We've had the A350-1000 making its show debut, as has this aircraft, the 787-10, which only recently flew for the first time. As a result, it's not been taking part in the flying display, but it will be going back as early as Tuesday to rejoin the flight test program. Now, the 787-10 has some major features in addition to the fuselage stretch. One of the key elements has been the introduction of the new Rolls-Royce Trent 1010 engine and the addition of a new semi-levered gear main undercarriage. We tracked down one of the Boeing engineers who was able to talk to us in some detail about that feature. To explain more about the semi-levered gear, we're talking to Wayne Tigert, Chief Project Engineer and Acting Program Manager for the 787-10. So Wayne, could you just give us a brief description of how the uh, semi-levered system works? Sure, as you can see on the, on the front of the gear, we've got an additional actuator that we've put on. And uh, very similar to our design on the 777 semi-levered gear, in, uh, simply put, that actuator basically locks out the gear such that we can now pivot and rotate off the, the trailing tires. So that gives us that additional uh, geometric ability and the ability to then rotate off the rear tires rather than have the gear pivot. So it gives us that additional takeoff performance that we're looking for. And I understand also that uh, there's a slight twist somehow, it's sort of offset um, arrangement to enable that to be folded in. Yeah, you can imagine the complexity and the kinemats of getting that gear up into the well. So. Um, that's why if you look straight on, you'll see it's slightly uh, canted, and that's all about fitting it up inside the wheel well. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Now the A350-1000, of course, is a brand new part of the uh, Airbus wide-body fleet. So Jens, obviously a big show for Airbus again, and the uh, first time they've had the A350-1000 here. Do you know um, what the status is at the moment of flight testing? Well, the, the, as you say, the flight tests are doing uh, are going very smoothly, as far as we we can tell and we know. Uh, obviously, it's the second derivative of the 350, uh, following the 900, uh, and as as Boeing uh, tends to experience uh, too, uh, testing the second derivative, derivative is always a little easier than the first one. So that's going smoothly. Uh, they're sticking to the uh, certification targets. Uh, uh, before the end of the year and delivery before the end of the year, obviously subject to uh, cut our approvals. Now one of the things that perhaps hasn't gone so smoothly is the uh, A330neo program to re-engine that aircraft with the uh, Rolls-Royce derived, uh, the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000, which is of course derived from the engine for the 787-10. Um, do you know what is happening with that program and of course uh, sadly that it's not here at the air show, of course, um, if it will see it fly later this year. Yeah, that's a, that's a big disappointment for them. I remember doing a story about the aircraft and the, 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 the development program and all went well, actually. Uh, and this is not to blame on Airbus, really. It's, uh, it's a Rolls-Royce uh, issue. The engines are late. Uh, it appears that uh, Rolls-Royce has taken a lot on uh, in various uh, different aircraft programs that they, they have been late in delivering the aircraft, uh, the, the engines. The, engine, the first engines have actually just arrived now. There are two uh, test aircraft parked in Toulouse uh, waiting for the engines to install. Uh, Fabrice Bregier in our interview told us that uh, the uh, first will fly by the end of the summer. So uh, I guess that means uh, like you know, August, September. Uh, and then the first uh, 330 NEO uh, uh, will be delivered uh, at the end of the second uh, of the first half of um, 2018.